You guys know Quentin Tarantino? This isn't about the album certifications, but do you know Quentin Tarantino? Well, he makes a bunch of really cool movies, and what I did is I watched all of his movies last week. And then I made a video where I ranked each one of those movies. And then I took that video and I uploaded it to my second channel called Mike's Thoughts. I put a lot of work into it. I'm really happy with the way it came out. And I just thought some of you might want to see it. It's going to be one of the suggested videos that come up after this video is over. Now that you know that video exists, let's get to this video. <laughs> Taylor Swift just released her new album, or maybe I should say it the cool way. Taylor Swift just dropped her new album, and Eminem is about to drop his new album. I started wondering, which is going to sell better? It seems like Eminem has been getting high sales consistently for nearly 20 years, but then Taylor Swift is one of the hottest artists on the planet right now. It's an interesting question that I don't have an answer for, but what I am sure about is there's going to be a crazy amount of records sold this month. I wouldn't be surprised if they both went platinum. Well, it's when I first had that thought is when I realized I don't really know what I'm talking about. I know the term platinum means they sold a ton of records, maybe a million, but then sometimes I hear someone say that record went triple platinum, so maybe that's three million? It could mean something else, I don't know. I think there may be a golden record as well, but then where does that fit in? I never hear anyone say that record went golden. So is gold a thing? Is there triple gold? What about silver? Have I heard the term silver record? I'm not even sure. I'll admit it. I really don't know how these rankings work. I'm guessing most people watching this have heard these terms, but won't be able to tell me exactly how it all works. I think that's because it's confusing. I'd like to propose some changes to the system, but first, let's make sure we all understand how it works. There's a company called RIAA the Recording Industry Association of America. They're not a record label themselves, but they work closely with the labels. They have three main functions. They deal with copyright laws and the legal side of music. That part's not related to what we're talking about here. The second thing they do is they keep track of a bunch of music-related statistics and I mean a bunch of them. They could tell you something as specific as revenues from Latin music in the United States for the first half of 2017 were 115 million, and that's up 44% from the previous year. They could tell you the proportion of total US music revenues from streaming from year to year. By the way, it's growing rapidly. They're a fantastic source of data for the music industry. And you can imagine, for someone in the music industry, this information could be invaluable. The third function of the RIAA is to give out the awards that I spoke about earlier. So here's the actual tiers. To qualify for gold status, the album has to sell 500,000 units. Platinum is just as I suspected, 1 million units. Multi-platinum is over 2 million units, so double platinum is 2 million, triple platinum is 3 million, and it goes like that. Then, if the album gets all the way up to 10 million units, it qualifies for diamond, and that's the highest tier we have today. Another big question I had about this is, how do they count all of it? I mean, does the sale of a physical CD mean more than a digital download? What about when people buy individual songs or singles instead of the full album? As I just showed you, streaming is the new big thing in music. If I stream a song on Spotify or watch it on YouTube, how do they account for that? There's actually very clear guidelines set for all of it. This is taken straight from the RIAA. Each permanent digital album or physical album sale count as one unit for certification purposes, so it doesn't make a difference if it's bought from iTunes or if it's a physical CD from the store. Both are counted as one single sale. 10 permanent track downloads from the album count as one unit for certification purposes. So if a single song is downloaded 10 times, they count that as one album sale. I suppose they determine 10 to be around the average number of tracks on an album, so I suppose this makes sense. 1500 on-demand audio or visual streams from the album count as one unit for certification purposes. So 1500 Spotify streams or YouTube views count as one album sale. No idea how they came up with this number, but it seems reasonable enough. 
A potential loophole that they've addressed is the price of an album. Someone might try to beat the system and sell their album for 5 cents to ensure 1 million sales. To avoid something like this, they've set minimum prices for the album to qualify. Average wholesale value of $2 per album or an average retail value of $6 per album. So if you see an album with a price tag above $6, it qualifies. I also want to make clear that these tiers only count sales in the United States. Everything I've said so far only applies to the United States, which is generally the most respected system. For example, an album only needs to sell 80,000 units to go platinum in Canada. So for fun, anyone want to try to guess which album has the most certification units? So basically the best selling album of all time in the United States. Here, let's do this. I think the number one album isn't too hard to guess, but I think the number two album is nearly impossible to guess. So in the number one spot, it's Thriller from Michael Jackson, 33 million units sold. For the number two album on the list, I encourage you to go to the comment section and make a guess. I don't think you'll get it, but I'm curious to hear what the guesses are anyway. It's at 29 million units sold, only 4 million behind Thriller. Alright, if you want to, pause it now and construct your guess. The answer is the Eagles' greatest hits 1971 through 1975, followed by Billy Joel's greatest hits Led Zeppelin IV and Pink Floyd's The Wall. Since people today commonly download songs individually rather than buying the full album, they've also had to deal with the issue of people having tremendous sales for a particular song but not as much for the rest of the album. This motivated them to establish a second award called the RIAA Digital Single Award, which has its own set of rules, but I don't want to get too sidetracked with it. I just wanted to make you aware that it existed. Okay. I think we all have a decent understanding of how this system works. Now, let me propose a few ways to change it. In the beginning, I was completely confused, but then when we looked at the breakdown, it was actually very straightforward. When it's right in front of you, it's pretty easy. The issue is that it's not memorable. The ranking I think we're all familiar with is bronze, silver, gold. That's how the Olympics works, that's what we all know. Their system of gold, platinum, diamond isn't intuitive. Gold, which is typically associated as being the best, is the lowest. It's like if McDonald's sold things with the options of large, extra large, and super size. It doesn't make any sense to have something labeled as large to be the smallest option. But I understand how the rankings got so jumbled. They started these awards all the way back in 1958. At that time, they only had gold. If someone's record did really well, they got a gold record. Highest possible honor at the time. But then by the 1970s, people were selling far more albums than in the 50s. The gold record status became too easy to achieve, so they made a change. They introduced the platinum status. But then more problems by the 1980s. Now there were CDs, and music was much easier to listen to than ever before. Sales kept climbing, and they felt the need to introduce the multi-platinum system. Then in the 90s, when sales kept growing, there was more need to establish another tier, and that tier was Diamond. The crazy system we have today is a result of failure to predict sales trends in the future, and I can't fault them for it. Could you imagine trying to predict CDs and iTunes digital downloads back in 1958? There's just no way. Now, here's how I propose we fix the system. To me, Platinum is the popular ranking. It's the one I hear the most about and the one most people are familiar with. I never hear people talking about gold or diamond, and actually they just make things confusing. I say get rid of them. In my new system, if an album hits 1 million units, it's Platinum. 5 million is 5 times Platinum. And instead of diamond, 10 million albums is simply 10 times platinum. If someone can tell me why we need that diamond tier, I'd like to hear it. 10 times platinum sounds a lot better to me, and most importantly, I can understand easily what it means. Even looking at the Thriller album, what am I supposed to call it? Is it 3 times diamond? 33 times platinum, 66 times gold? With my new system, no need to memorize a chart of tiers that's not intuitive. 
Just know that platinum equals 1 million albums sold, and you're set. I know it doesn't take a genius IQ to figure out the current system, but this is one of those things where you just really want it to be as simple as possible. When we hear anything in everyday life, we don't want to take time to understand it because we usually won't. It has to be fully understandable as soon as we hear it, and that's what I think my system offers. A common thought might be to get rid of the terms altogether. Why do we even need platinum to be involved at all? Just call it one million sales. I think the terms are good, simply because they make it sound like a big deal. It's a way for the people who are more familiar with it to determine what qualifies as impressive. If someone simply said an album sold one million copies, I wouldn't know what to think of it. For all I know, that may be low for the industry. But when they say an album went platinum, I know that's meaningful. I do want to note that you could use these numbers to judge the success of an album or the popularity of an artist, but in no way measure the quality of the song or the talent of the artist. The awards indicate accomplishment in the music industry, but shouldn't influence anyone when making judgments about the actual content. For the consumer, the person listening to the music, it shouldn't mean too much. But it is nice to understand what's going on from every angle. Let me know in the comments what you think about the current system and my proposed changes to it. You might say that things aren't bad the way they are now and that I'm just overthinking it. And I might have to agree with you. It's a good concept. I'm glad the albums get awarded the way that they do. If I sold a million albums, I would be very appreciative of this honor. Any criticisms I have are just minor and are really just attempts to make the public more aware of what they're doing. So any thoughts you have about gold, platinum, diamond, or the Eagles' greatest hits album taking the number two spot, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.